coming up on the AFN Europe Report. Coalition forces work in tandem with Afghan troops to take the fight to the Taliban's hideouts. Plus, U.S. troops receive some unique training and learn to fire the weapons of our allies. And we follow the amazing story of two brothers raising money for wounded warriors by undertaking a long and dangerous journey across the Atlantic Ocean. Quitting's not an option. It never was an option. Those stories and more. Your station. Your stories. The AFN Europe Report starts. Up next, we meet two brothers who took the long, dangerous way to Europe for the sake of wounded warriors. Quitting is not an option. It never was an option. Yeah, and by the way, when you send a soldier into combat, quitting is not an option. Our next story is on two men who face the doubts and ridicule of millions, only to prove everyone wrong. Army Sergeant Amanda Ford has the story on two guys who just won't quit. Some people say Ralph's crazy for doing what he did. <laughs> he threw away a six-figure income and a comfortable life to make a life-threatening journey halfway around the world in a flats boat he designed. So the wife is mad at me a little bit. A very small boat <laughs> for a very big ocean. How she has reason to be. His voyage received national attention. Ralph Brown pushed his flats boat through waters anything but flat. He took a vessel meant for the shallows and put it out to sea. But he didn't do it for the recognition. He says he did it to keep his word to three Marines who died during a U.S. military operation in Iran 29 years ago. We kind of wanted to do this trip and uh, use the publicity from this trip to promote Wounded Hero Foundations. It was a tiny engine that pushed he and his brother Bob more than 6,200 miles across the Atlantic Ocean. Critics called it the little boat that couldn't. Now it's become the little boat that did. <laughs> it was a rough journey for the battered little craft. It's broke here. Here. This boat had a beating. With no cabin, it was man versus nature. Heading into rugged Icelandic waves, the expedition became perilous. When you're in the middle of the ocean, there's no off switch. <laughs> the Atlantic sometimes seemed too powerful for their humble vessel, but even more powerful was their cause. Quitting's not an option. It never was an option. And by the way, when you send a soldier into combat, quitting's not an option. Like the Marine he used to be, he has a mission. Just, you know. Do what you gotta do. No waves, no glaciers, no equipment malfunctions. Wow. This is our speed prop that we lost. And no doubts. Now along with the Coast Guard, the wives of the two men weren't too happy about the trip. Are going to stop him as long as stubborn Ralph has the helm. There's no doubt in my mind about it. And here they are now after two months on the quiet Rhine River in Germany. Almost done with their journey with the world record for the longest oceanic crossing in a flats boat. Until they've reached their ultimate destination, Lonstuhl Regional Medical Center in Germany, where they will meet with wounded soldiers and their ultimate goal of raising three million dollars for wounded heroes. Do more than just say thank you to the wounded heroes and the families left behind. They won't be raising any flag of surrender. And I just salute you. Army Sergeant Amanda Ford, Wiesbaden, Germany. The Brown Brothers' 62,000-mile journey began in Tampa Bay, Florida, up the U.S. East Coast to Canada and made their way up to Greenland, then down to Iceland, Scotland, and England before ending up in Wiesbaden, Germany, 48 days later. Up next, AFN follows the Brown Brothers' journey all the way to its destination. Report. Roger, understood. Hey. 
We now continue with the story of the Braun brothers. Air Force Sergeant Michael Garza was there as they marked the end of their transatlantic journey. After two and a half months and over 8,000 miles, Ralph and Robert finally made it to Europe. Their trip is almost finished. From London, they traveled to Germany to visit wounded warriors at Launch Duels Regional Medical Center. They moved up the, up the coast, up the east coast from Tampa to Canada, Greenland, all the way across the Atlantic Ocean to uh, England and Germany. And they, they did it for us. And I thought that was pretty amazing. One thing is for sure, Rolf and Robert are keeping a promise and making a difference for wounded warriors. The two brothers are planning to raise some serious money. We decided to try to raise money for wounded heroes in honor of the three men that gave their life. I'm going to fulfill this obligation of $3 million, somehow, some way, some shape. Rolf and Robert's trip will give more than money. It gives the wounded warriors some hope and motivation. We, do, we, all, we all sacrifice a lot. And sometimes you, you lose focus on why you're doing it, you know. But this is why, you know, you've got great people out there who, who see this, that sacrifice, and they're willing to do it too. They're willing to sacrifice too to help you out. Ralph and Robert's journey has come to an end, but their voyage to support wounded heroes will continue. Air Force Sergeant Michael Garza launched Old Germany. The Brown Brothers aim to sell 150,000 Do More Than Say Thanks t-shirts to raise $3 million for wounded service members. Their website is www.crosstheatlantic.com. And that's all the time we have here tonight. For everyone at the AFN Year Report, thanks for joining us. Have a great night.